Branding paid ads to sell your affiliate products can be an amazing way to drive sales without doing things like brand building and consistently publishing content. So imagine giving me a dollar and then I give you back two. And then let's go a little further. You give me $2,000, I give you back $4,000. That is what running high converting Facebook ads can feel like. However, for every successful affiliate marketer that runs these Facebook ads, there are dozens that fail. It's not easy. So in this video, I'm going to show you the eight biggest mistakes that are causing marketers to fail with their paid ads on Facebook when it comes to affiliate products. And by avoiding these mistakes, you're going to streamline your path to success with paid ads. and You'll be able to confidently spend money on ads, knowing that you're not gambling, you're actually investing. What's up everybody. This is Nate McAllister. If this is your first time to the channel and you're an affiliate marketer, be sure to hit subscribe. If you want two to three brand new videos, just like this every week. This is part of my new audio focus series where I'm going to create content that you can listen to without watching the video. I love to listen to YouTube videos while I'm mowing the lawn, while I'm at the gym. And I wanted to make content like that. So if you're not watching this on a device with a screen, that's totally fine because everything that I'm talking about is audio focused and you're not missing anything. We don't run ads on this channel, so you're not even missing any of those. If you like to see ads. All right, so let's get into the mistakes. Mistake number one, running ads directly to sales pages. And remember, this is regarding Facebook. There is a time and a place to run ads directly to sales pages. When I run native ads, that's what I do. I run them to sales pages for the products that I promote, but that is completely different. When it comes to Facebook, what we need to be doing is collecting email addresses. If we send someone straight to a sales page, if they don't buy, they're basically gone. We have to pay to show them the content again. But if we're able to get them on our email list, we get to show them the content again for free. So we can turn one click into potentially dozens of different impressions. And when it comes to sales online, there's something called the rule of seven. And really now it's more like the rule of 20 or 30, given how many different things are on the internet crying for our attention. The rule of seven basically states that someone has to see something seven times before they're ready to buy. So if you're running ads straight to a product, the odds are that you might just be the first time they've ever seen that product. So you might be impression number one. So the best thing that we can do is send them to pages that will help us grab their emails. There is one exception to this rule when it comes to Facebook though. If you're running ads to custom audiences from your existing email list, which is a brilliant thing to do, by the way, if you have a big email list or even a small email list, upload that list into Facebook and then run ads to it as a custom audience. Those you don't want to send them to a lead magnet because you already have their email. So you want to send them to something else. It might not be the sales page. It might be a piece of content that shows how you're using a product, or it might be something that introduces them to a different product, right? Mistake number two, when running Facebook ads for affiliate products, not knowing the conversion value. Peter Drucker said it best, what gets measured gets managed. And when you run ads, you have to have some sort of idea of what a conversion is worth because then you can know how much you can actually spend. So tracking and analytics is always an uphill battle when it comes to affiliate marketing, since we don't have access to the back end of the products that we promote, but we need to know what a conversion is worth. So we know how much we can pay for it. Some affiliate programs are pretty upfront about their average conversion values, but sometimes you need to ask and almost every affiliate program I've ever worked with has been upfront with that. And they've given me that information if I asked for it. So unless you've been tracking conversions on your own with something like click magic, uh, which isn't always possible, you should always ask. Also, if it's a product that offers trials, you want to ask them what the average conversion rate is for trials that then turn into actual buyers. So you need to be able to measure what you're doing. So you know how much to pay. Mistake number three, not having a follow-up sequence. Once you've turned someone into an email subscriber, you should have an immediate email sequence that gets triggered. This is your opportunity to get off on the right foot with them and also for you to stay top of mind and keep the products that you're trying to promote top of mind. Mistake number four, not pixeling your existing content. This is one of the greatest advantages of being a content creator with a website and running paid ads on Facebook. We're able to retarget the people that have visited our site. That means that everyone who's visited our site has turned from cold traffic into warm traffic. The fact that they know us just even a little bit, they've just been to our site. They are now warm traffic. And then you can even make your audience so specific that it's targeted to that specific product. So let's say you do a review post, you could do a retargeting audience that is just people who landed on that review post. So that is already super warm traffic. It's going to cost less and it's going to convert more. So be sure that you have your pixels set up and your custom audiences are being created so that you can run ads to them. 
I always spend as much money as possible on my retargeting ads before I spend money on anything else. Mistake number five, running ads for too long. So it would be amazing if you could just create your ads and then ride off into the sunset and just make money on the beach forever. But that is not how it works. When you keep running the same ads, your frequency is going to get really high. And if you don't know, frequency is the average number of times each person in the audience has seen the ads. So a frequency of seven means that each person inside of the audience has seen it about seven times. And when it gets too high, people start to get banner blindness. Yes, some people will buy later. Like I said, it actually takes a ton of impressions to get people to buy. But the odds of them converting after a certain point, you have to change up the content. You have to change up the ad. You can keep running to the same people, but you need to at least change up your ad graphics, your copy, and the sales angles that you're going with. Mistake number six is the opposite, not running ads long enough. It's really tempting to cut the cord when your ads are just hemorrhaging money, especially when you're brand new. It's so easy to be like, oh, Facebook ads don't work. This is a scam. It's so easy to give up, but you have to let them play out. Think of it as your tuition to learning paid traffic. You're not going to make money on your first ads, most likely. Be okay with that and realize that it's part of the process. So don't panic if you just spent $20 and didn't get a conversion. You need to let your ads run. You might spend $200 and you might only make $100 in sales. That's part of the process, guys. You have to learn from your mistakes, optimize. And I'm not saying just keep running ads when they're losing money, but you do have to let them go long enough so that you have an actual scope that gives you enough data to really make decisions going forward so you can find what's working and what's not. You need to let that run out. Mistake number seven is not optimizing and testing. It's so crazy to me how a simple change to an ad or a graphic or just some small tweak can impact the results. I changed the color of an ad from red to blue and it's seven X the conversions. It was insane. So this part can be extremely tedious. And the last thing that I want you to do is spend too much time optimizing and fiddling with your ads. So I do recommend a software like Ad Espresso. Uh, there's a couple of other options for tools that make it easier to run tests. So if you have the budget for it, that's a tool that I like to use. You want to make sure that some way or another testing is being done continually. David Ogilvy said it best. If you never stop testing, you will never stop improving. All right, mistake number eight. This one's pretty straightforward, violating the affiliate terms of service. There's nothing worse than creating a successful campaign on Facebook and putting in all this time, effort, and money only to realize that you weren't allowed to be doing it and the affiliate program shuts you down. Most affiliate programs are cool with people running Facebook ads. The problem that they usually have is when people run search ads on Google to their brand name. But Facebook ads, if the affiliate program is not letting you run them, I would ask them why because it is really not any skin off their nose. So I've always been shocked that some companies don't allow that, but you need to play by their rules. So make sure that before you run any paid ads on social media, that you ask and make sure that it's okay in their terms of service. All right, guys, that is it. Those are the eight mistakes that are killing the Facebook ad campaigns of affiliate marketers. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Again, if you're an affiliate marketer and you want two to three additional videos per week, just like this one, hit subscribe and I will see you in the next video.